With this Guitar Lessons for Beginners video, we'll show you how to play an easy strum version of Sweet Home Alabama that works well for both acoustic and electric guitars. Along with chord diagrams and guitar taps, we'll cover it all with the step-by-step -step approach. On the original recording of Sweet Home Alabama, you have several guitars that are featured, and many times they are playing together at the same time. So, for this easy strum arrangement for beginners, we're just going to focus on the essential guitar parts for a one-person performance. And so with that, we're going to delete uh, a lot of the parts that are a little bit more challenging to play. And so let's start with the intro, and that's going to be with an open D chord. And you definitely want to use a guitar pick for this. If you don't, you're going to get a blister on your thumb right away. And with this D chord, we're going to start by plucking the fourth string twice. And while holding the D chord shape, that fourth string is going to be open. And then we go to the second string. Now, technically that's the second string third fret, but if you're holding a D, uh, we simply just have to say go to the second string. And then go to the third string. Once you get those four notes down, you want to apply a count that's going to help set a tempo. You're going to count it one, two, three, four. And we'll do that again. One, two, three, four. Then we go to our first chord change. Uh, the next chord is going to be a C add two. That's the technical name for the chord. And how we get there is we lift our one and two fingers. And then we just simply reach or extend that second finger down to the fifth string third fret. So C add two, complicated name, but a real easy chord to play. You just have two fingers down. Again, keep that third finger anchored from the previous D chord and just reach the second finger down to fret that bass note. And this is another four count. We're going to play the bass note twice which is the 5th string, 3rd fret, and then we jump to those same two strings again. Again, that's technically a C add 2 chord. Uh, I'm going to just nickname it C for this lesson. It saves a little bit of syllables. It makes it easier when we're explaining the progression. So, from the beginning, we go from D to C. And let's put together uh, the first two chords. Again, the key is keeping that third finger anchored on the second string third fret. And from C, uh, we go to our final chord, and that's a real easy switch. All you do is take that second finger, the middle finger on the fifth string third fret, and just shift it down to the bottom string third fret. And this is technically a G chord. It's an alternate way to play a G chord. And what we're going to do here, it's a slight variation. We are going to start with two bass notes. This time it's the bottom string. And then we strum the middle strings. And that second one was better because you want to include the second string. So I would say the second, third, and fourth strings. That's the idea. You don't, you don't want to play that top string. So what you can do, if you really dig in, if you see what I did there, the first string stops the pick. So uh, that way, you're guaranteed not to sound that top string. And how you'll count that, one, two, three. So putting it together from the beginning, it's a three chord progression, D, C, G, here we go from the top, we'll do a real slow walkthrough. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, strum, or one, two, three. And we'll do that one more time. Let's do one more just to get a good foundation. From there, we go 
to the next section, which is the riff section. Uh, on the original recording, again, you have several guitars, and there are uh, many riffs played throughout the song. For this uh, beginner's lesson, this easy strum version, we're just going to use one riff. It's going to sound familiar because it's very similar to most of the riffs you'll hear in the song. And here's what we do. From that G chord that we just played, one, two, strum, you've got your middle finger anchored on that bottom string third fret. What you want to do is copy my finger. You lift the finger off the string and for the riff it starts like this. Now I sounded two notes but I only plucked the bottom string once. That's a hammer technique going from the open sixth string to the third fret. If you look at the tab, the hammer is indicated with the curve between the 0 and the 3. That means you pluck the open 6th string and you sound that 3rd fret by the hammer technique. You don't pluck that note again. And the whole time we're keeping our 3rd finger anchored on that 2nd string 3rd fret. So let's go to the rest of the riff, 0, 3 on that bottom string. Then we go to the next string, the fifth string, another hammer. Uh, this time it'll be zero two. And you want to use the correct fingers. If you use the correct fingers, middle finger for zero three, first finger for zero two on the fifth string, that keeps your fretting hand steady in position. And then we complete the riff, we shift to the fourth string. That's another zero two, but then we pluck that open string to finish off the riff. So putting the complete riff together, zero three hammer, zero two hammer, zero two hammer again, and then pluck that string just normal. So next we'll combine the riff with the three chord progression. So it's D. C, G, and then the riff. And here we go from the beginning, slow walk through. One, two, ready, go. And we'll do that one more time. One, two, Ready, go. This combination of the three chord progression and the riff, it's going to be repeated throughout most of the song. There's going to be some strumming variations we're going to throw in later. Uh, but even for the intro, we're going to repeat what we just did. And so there is, that means there's one more transition to worry about, and that is after the riff, going back or to that open D chord as quickly as possible. And uh, one tip on that, after you play the riff, well, the that same note, the open four string that we end the riff with is the same uh, bass notes we play same bass note we played to start the progression. So your strumming end's not going to move at all. You're going to stay on that fourth string. And again, keep that third finger anchored on the third string second fret. And another note is that first finger is right there in the vicinity. You just got to shift it slightly over to form the D chord. So uh, keeping that third finger down and knowing that that first finger uh, is nearby to go down that third string uh, that's less fingers to worry about for that transition. So um, that's what we're going to do next. Let's uh, put it all together, uh, repeating the progression. One, two, ready, go. With that in the next clip, you can practice putting it all together. We're going to run through it 
four total times so you get a good foundation down. And again, it's not just fine-tuning the intro, it's working on that progression as well. Like I said, it's going to be repeated throughout the song. So it's a good idea with that next clip. See if you can keep up a little bit of faster pace. We're going to play it four times in a row. On the original recording, after the intro, the song sort of kicks in with all the other instruments uh, joining in, the several guitars, the bass, the drums, and the organ, background singers. And so for a one-person version, uh, for an easy strum version, we need to sort of, sort of copy that bigger sound that happens uh, when all the instruments come in. So we're going to throw in a strumming variation to the three chord progression. It's actually easier than playing the intro, so if you have the intro down, this shouldn't be too challenging working on the strum variation. We're going to start again with that D. Same two bass notes again, one, two, and then we just simply strum away. Uh, you want to dig in, just like we did on the strumming earlier when we did the strum, we don't really want to include that top string. You want to fret a D chord. If you accidentally strum the top string once in a while, it's not the end of the world, but it sounds a lot uh, better if you just get those three strings, four, three, and two to ring on the strum. So it's one, two, strum, and then to the C chord, one, two, and then a strum on that as well. Again, going for four, three, and two. Now if you include the fifth on that, that's fine. So backing it up, one, two, strum with the D, one, two, strum with the G, with the C, I should say. And then we go to G, one, two, strum. Back to the beginning. One, two, strum, one, two, strum, one, two, strum. And then the riff. And just like the intro, we'll repeat the strum. We're going to do a little variation um, for the strumming part, which we're going to play throughout the verse and the chorus sections. Uh, there's going to be a variation. We're not going to do the riff every time in between. We're going to play it every other time. Every other time after the riff, we're going to do what I call a double G. Double G, a double G, so just doubling up on uh, strumming the G chord. Um, so, again, we're alternating between the riff and the strum. So I'll show you how that sounds, putting it together from the very beginning, at least the very beginning of the strum part. So uh, here we go with the strum. D, C, G, and then riff. Then we repeat the progression. D, C, and then double G. So what we'll do in the next clip, um, we're going to repeat this um, twice. What I just played, we're just going to double it up. Again, uh, this strumming is going to be repeated a lot throughout the song, throughout the verse and chorus section. So when we fine tune those sections later, it's a good idea to get a good foundation. So next clip, we'll go through the easy strum progression twice. Once you have the chord progression and then the strum pattern down, the next step is to focus on syncing or timing the lyrics with the chord changes. 
and we're sort of going to talk through uh, the lyrics to start uh, because since this lesson is for beginners, um, you don't worry about singing in key right away when you're trying to strum along. Uh, the first step is to get the timing down. So we're going to talk our way just to get you acclimated to landing on the changes right. Then that final step is uh, really putting more into the singing and focusing on singing in key. So with that, um, we're going to go to the chorus section. Uh, we're not going to do it in chronological order because most people know the lyrics to the chorus before they know the or learn the lyrics to the verse. So it's that same progression with the strumming. First step is uh, Sweet Home Alabama. On sweet is when we do the strum. So you don't say anything on the bass notes. Sweet. So sweet is on the strum. Sweet Home Alabama. So that next key landing point is bam. That syllable bam lands right on that bass note for the G chord. Bama. Let's put that together from the top. Sweet Home Alabama. Another point as far as syncing everything up is uh, these syllables, ala, those sort of float around before you hit that Bama bass note. Here's what I mean. Sweet Home Alabama. Then the riff. Where will be on the strum? skies are so blue. So that landing point again on the G bass note, the first time it's on Bama, the second time it's on blue. Uh, let's do that again for the where the skies are so blue. Where the skies are so blue. Don't forget that's the double G that we do every other time. Let's put it together from the beginning of the chorus. way we'll approach the chorus. Later on this lesson we're going to show you uh, an additional ending you do for the chorus, but for now it's the same easy strum pattern. Um, and again we're just syncing up uh, the lyrics. Step one is what we just did uh, with the chorus. So in the next clip uh, you can practice syncing up the lyrics with the chorus. Uh, we'll go through it uh, one time uh, with a slower tempo. Verse 1, again, the same progression, same strum pattern, just different lyrics to focus on syncing with. And the lyrics for verse 1, Big wheels keep on turning, carry me home to see my kin. So uh, with that, we sync that up. Uh, we'll show you how it works. Big wheels keep on turning. So turnings on that G. Riff. next clip, uh, you can practice trying the lyrics on your own. Uh, we'll do the same thing again, except without me guiding you through, and it'll just be verse 1 with the next clip.
Now at this point it's a good idea to put everything we've learned so far and to put it together into a basic arrangement. Uh, we just have a couple of things to add. We've got an intro, we've got a verse, and we've got a chorus. Um, but one thing for basic arrangement, we want to put, uh, we want to add an ending to it. So uh, we're going to end with the first chorus and a suggested ending. Uh, we're going to do a variation for the ending. Um, that last uh, line for the chorus, Lord, I'm coming home to you. Lord, I'm coming home to you. Now, we usually did a double G, or we initially showed you a double G uh, just to get acclimated to the arrangement. But for the ending, we're going to do a variation uh, on that last line. And it's going to be an F, C, G. And then we can rev it up a little bit. And how we're going to apply that to the last line, it'll be Lord, I'm coming home to you. We still do the G once, and then we go to a, a basic F chord, just the top four strings. I save this for later in the lesson because a lot of you may not have played this chord yet if you're beginners. So uh, this is a great way to get acclimated to the easy F chord, just the top four strings just going to strum it once, F, then C, and then G, a nice regular open G, and a tip on the F to the C transition. They're similar shapes. Uh, what you do is just shift the two and three fingers down, one string, and then kind of arch or curve that first finger over for C, because for the F, you have to partially bar across those top two strings. So F. C, you may need to work on that for a while, and then G, and that's going to be the ending um, for this abbreviated arrangement. And so, one other thing to add in before we put this all together, we're going to do what I would refer to as a pre-verse. After the intro, rather than jumping right into verse 1 with the lyrics, we're going to strum the progression with, with no lyrics. So, um, I'll do a quick run through of the... Here's the intro. Then we kick in with the strum, easy strum pattern. No lyrics. It's just a way to sort of rev up into the song. Double G, double G. Then we kick in with verse one. Big wheels keep on turning. clip we'll go through the basic arrangement uh, with no without me saying anything uh, that way you can practice syncing the lyrics on your own uh, with the arrangement the basic arrangement uh, intro pre-verse verse one and then the chorus <laughs>
once you have the basic arrangement down, you can, if you want, extend things a little bit and go for a longer version of the song. Uh, the song, I think, goes for almost five minutes, uh, but it's a basic arrangement in that uh, you repeat verse and chorus sections uh, throughout the song, just with different lyrics. Uh, so what we'll do in this clip is give you a couple pointers if you want to extend things a bit. Uh, number one, um, at the end of the first chorus, now we did the ending. But if you're going to extend things a bit, maybe go into another verse in the second chorus, instead of that grand ending with the G, kick right back into the progression again and usually that would be another verse uh, on the original recording after the chorus there's guitar solos or like I said pre-verse sections uh, but for this easy strum arrangement you're just going to stay on that easy strum progression uh, no matter what you're doing um, the only time we do the intro will be for the intro so uh, that's one pointer there if you want to extend things Another thing is that FC transition is actually played later on in the song in the middle of a verse. They throw in a variation. It's on the In Birmingham They Love the Governor, that line. In Birmingham They Love the Governor. So there's a variation too that you could uh, work on if you want. Uh, but uh, honestly, if you are a beginner and you were able to play the arrangement in the previous clip, really that's a great first step um, for a beginner with work on Sweet Home Alabama. The primary objective of this lesson is to just get you used to syncing the lyrics with the chord changes and getting that initial timing down.